What if I told you that you could use Foundry, a popular framework for writing and testing code in Solidity to write and test code in Viper? Real life or pure fantasy? I'm Ed Zinda, and this is What The Funk. Right now, the most popular language to write smart contracts for Ethereum is Solidity. There is, however, another alternative that is gaining some traction. This language is called Viper. Viper gets its name for being very Python-like in its syntax. Developers like Viper because it's very minimal, very easy to read and audit, and focuses on writing bug-free smart contracts rather than giving you all the features under the sun. These restrictions allow Viper to compile highly optimized contracts out of the box. If you're a Solidity developer like me, you may have grown to love Foundry for its ease of use and speed. What if you wanna play around with Viper contracts, but you don't wanna move away from the greatest framework known to man? Well, you're in luck, because a Galaxy Brain developer known as 0 Kitsune has come up with an ingenious way to have the best of both worlds. In this video, I'll show you how to write Viper code and at the same time, test using Foundry. Before we get started, if you're new around here, we at What The Funk talk about all things Web3 and smart contract development. If that's something that you're into, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification icon so you can stay up to date whenever I post a new video. Let's get into it. So here we have a fresh Forge project created with Forge in it. In the source directory, we just have an empty Solidity contract. But in this case, we want to write a Viper contract and test it in Foundry. So to do that, we're going to make use of one of the superpowers of the Foundry framework. We will use a cheat code called FFI. So at the time of recording this video, we're still not able to write our tests in Viper, but we're able to write our contracts in Viper and test them in Solidity. So let's have a look at the FFI cheat code for a second. So the FFI cheat code allows you to call an arbitrary command outside of your contract. So in this example, it shows you how to call the echo command on your command line. If you're using a command line, normally if you run the echo command, you can echo whatever string you want and it basically prints it back out to you in the console. So in this example, uh, it shows you how to load that up by basically taking an array of inputs. Um, the first index is going to be the command, and then any index after that is going to be arguments for the command. So this is basically loading up all the arguments for echo, and then the response of the command is basically piped back into the smart contract so you can do something with that later. So 0x Kitsune has created a repo called Foundry Viper, and we can go ahead and read the readme for it real quick. So here it tells you to do a forge init using their template, but we're just going to copy and paste some of the needed parts from the repo itself. If we go into the lib directory and then utils, we have this Viper Deployer contract. So the Viper Deployer contract is just a Solidity contract, but it loads up the cheat codes from Foundry and then creates an instance of the cheat code uh, contract. And then down here, it has this deploy contract function. And as you can see, the deploy contract function creates an array for our commands. The first command is Viper, which is the compiler for compiling smart contracts. And here, one of the arguments is going into this Viper contracts directory and taking the file name that's passed in as an argument in the function and appending that and then appending .vy. So for this to work, we're going to have to create our own Viper contracts directory and put any Viper contracts in that directory. First, we're going to copy this and paste this into our own project. So here I've just copied this code and pasted it into viperdeployer.sol in our test and I just created a util folder for this. So now we need to create our Viper contracts folder. So here I've created my Viper contracts folder and I've created a contract called my contract. Next, I've gone ahead and copied and pasted the contract from 0 Kitsune's repo. So the next step, we just need to create a test for this. Here, we're just going to modify the example test that comes with the fresh installation. The first thing we need to do is create an interface for the Viper contract so Solidity knows how to talk to it. So our contract only has two methods, a store and get method. Next, we need to import the Viper deployer and then create a new Viper deployer instance. We should also create a variable for our contract. And in the setup method, we're going to compile and deploy our Viper contract and store that instance in the variable we created up above. Note that I called this my contract because that's what I named the file in our project. And this is what the Viper deployer is going to use to look up the file path. Let's get rid of this example test. 
And here we create our first test, which tests the getter. Next, we can create a fuzzing test, which will go ahead and store a bunch of random values. And finally, a test that goes ahead and stores the value and makes sure that the stored value is the value that was stored. Now in our terminal, we can run forge test. And you can see that it failed because we are using the FFI cheat code. Because the FFI cheat code allows you to run any arbitrary command on your computer, it's not enabled by default. So in order to enable it, you need to either pass a flag or enable it in the foundry.toml file. So let's go ahead and run the test again, but this time with the FFI flag enabled. And as you can see, that worked. And that's it. That's how you can use the magic of Foundry's cheat codes to write and test Viper contracts in Foundry. So what do you think? Is this something that you'd like to try? Which language do you prefer, Viper or Solidity? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Also, if you have any comments or questions, leave those down below. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.